In this video, we're going to solve the n polarizer problem. So in this problem, we've got input light with an intensity i naught, and we want to know what the intensity of the output light is. And let's say that our input light is linearly polarized along the, let's call this the y direction, and each polarizer, as we go to our first polarizer, second polarizer, third polarizer, is tilted by a little bit with respect to the previous one, and that tilt that relative angle we'll call delta theta. And after we get through n total polarizers, we our final angle is at 90 degrees relative to the input polarization. And this is actually a pretty cool problem, both mathematically, but also because it uh, we'll, we'll see at the end that this allows us to tilt light without losing very much energy at all. It allows us to change the polarization of light. So how exactly do we do this problem? Well, we can use Malice's law, which says that the output intensity, or let's call this the intensity after the first polarizer, so I1, is equal to the input intensity multiplied by cosine squared of the angle between that polarizer and the previous polarization. And we can keep on applying this. So that was for light after the first polarizer. And after the second polarizer, we can say I2 is I1 times cosine squared of delta theta. Because once light comes out of the first polarizer, it's ever so slightly tilted. And when it and we care about the difference in angle between the light that comes out of the first polarizer and the polarization angle of the second polarizer. And fortunately, we have we always have the same angle delta theta. But we can also replace I1 with I naught times cosine squared of delta theta, in which case we'll have I naught times cosine to the fourth of delta theta for our second intensity. And if we keep playing this game, we'll eventually get that I n, the intensity after the nth polarizer, is I naught times cosine to the 2n of delta theta. Now, this isn't super informative as, as it is right here. You know, we got a nice equation, but what does it actually mean? Well, I'm going to tell you that the number of polarizers is large. And what this means is that delta theta is small. And anytime you hear the word small in any sort of math context, I want you to immediately think a series approximation because this will make our lives much, much easier and it will allow us to gain some insight into what this equation is actually saying. So if you don't happen to remember off the top of your head what the series approximation is for cosine, and that's totally reasonable, I forget it all the time, you can look it up. Uh, but cosine of x, if x is small, is approximately 1 minus x squared over 2. And that's nice, nice and simple. There's a bunch of other terms off to the right, but as long as x is small, we can ignore them. And so I can say that this is approximately i naught times 1 minus delta theta squared over 2. And then all that is to the 2n. Now, we made a little progress, but this is still an ugly equation. Uh, arguably, it's even more ugly than this one up above. But we've, because delta theta was small, this quantity is also small. So we can make another series approximation. And the series approximation for 1 plus x to the n is approximately 1 plus n times x. And so that makes our lives a whole lot simpler. That means that this whole mess becomes I naught times 1 minus delta theta squared. So here, del delta theta squared over 2 is our x, and n is 2n. 
So delta theta squared times 2n all over 2. And the 2s cancel, so that's nice. So this is just equal to i naught times 1 minus n delta theta squared. And finally, we can plug in, because we know that delta theta is just equal to our maximum rotation, which is pi over 2, divided by the number of polarizers, so divided by n. So our delta theta is pi over 2n. And so if we plug that in here, we'll get i naught times 1 minus pi squared over 4n. And this is a really interesting expression because we originally said that n is large. And here we've got an n in the denominator. So our output intensity is actually approximately just equal to our input intensity. Because this whole term, you know, pi squared over 4 is, is basically 1 for, for all intents and purposes. Uh, and n is very large. So this is a very small number. And so our output intensity is very close to our input intensity. And, you know, if n was a thousand, a million, a billion, then our output intensity is so close to our input intensity that it's not even worth talking about. And so this is really interesting. This tells us that if we gradually tilt light, then we can rotate it without losing energy, which is really cool um, and totally counterintuitive. The first time I saw this, I, I thought it was utterly bizarre. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.